look at uh, twin tail fall arrest lanyards, um, often given different names, but we've got a few component parts which are quite critical for these. We've got a connection point to the harness, an energy absorbing lanyard, which is the white tear webbing. That's probably the most common kind, sometimes in plastic, sometimes in zip pouches, sometimes in covered up pouches. And then we've got one or two, in this case, legs on the lanyard. The maximum length that can be is two meters. But depending on where we're working and how we're operating, two meters can give us quite a big fall distance. So it's probably worth understanding a little bit about fall factors and fall distances. We talk about FF0, fall factor zero. That's always the safest position we can be in. That's where our anchor point is high above us and there's no fall distance. Fall factor one, that gives us a position where we're able to move the lanyards around the structure. We've got a potential fall distance there and that's why we need the energy absorber in place. When we get to fall factor two, we're looking at worst case scenario. We're looking at a situation where we've got a connection point at foot level and we can fall the full length of that lanyard twice. So on a two meter long lanyard, we could potentially fall four meters and then we come to a dead stop and that's where the energy absorber takes place. So we're all working at height activity, finding good, suitable, appropriate anchor points that are high enough to reduce the fall factor is always going to be key and it's going to make sure that our safety is um, paramount on that. We've got different materials for lanyards. We've got some with a twisted hawser laid type rope, some with Kermantle type rope, and then we've got webbing either fixed or elasticated. And again, with the elasticated ones, it's always just worth considering how long they actually are. We might be led to think that a lanyard with an elasticated leg is that long, but in real life, when we pull it, it's actually longer by the whole length of the energy absorber package than the one next door. So it's worthwhile just bearing in mind, even though it maybe feels short and elasticated, um, how long actually is it when we're working. So what we'll move on to now is a little bit about the difference between a single and a twin leg lanyard. So a single leg lanyard here, connected onto the harness, means we can connect onto an anchor point and be protected from a fall. What it doesn't allow us to do is to move around the structure. And that's where a classic twin leg lanyard will allow us to move one of the legs and remain attached by the other leg at any time. What you'll see on these is that we have two legs running into a single shock absorber or a single energy absorber. And that's really, really quite important. What we can't do is use two single lanyards and put them together to make a twin lanyard. Because what we have there is we've got two energy absorber systems, two shock absorbers. In the event of a fall, we've got to hit it effectively twice as hard to get it to deploy and absorb that energy. So really, I suppose, in summary, what we're saying there is almost it doesn't matter how many legs you have, as long as we only have one energy absorbing, shock absorbing unit on a lanyard.